Greetings, dear Wen. Did you know attitude is contagious? It's worse than any contagious thing of all is consciousness, attitude that we pick up from other people. And so what you want to do is realize we rise and fall by our associations. And I think about, you know, the, the books that I like of uh, mostly ancient wisdom that is true and profound and applicable every single moment beyond time. So I'm associating with those great souls because I'm reading the results of their exploration into consciousness, uh, of attaining these various stages and, and, and um, qualities of being, bringing forth all their divine qualities and abilities and talents and powers. And it's really interesting. You become like who you associate with who you spend time with, um, who you believe, who is your authority, your author, your authority writing your story. And consciousness uh, of attitude is contagious. So when you have a beautiful attitude, others also can have a beautiful attitude because they'll pick it up from you unless they want to feel bad, you know. And then sometimes someone who's really feeling bad and you're feeling good, their energy could be so strong. I was someplace the other day when a person came into the room with so much anger. And I mean, I was like, whoa, it's like knocking me off and the energy just pervades. And what is it? Didn't say anything in that sense, but it's a feeling. And, you know, it happens in relationships, you say, well, what's the matter? Well, nothing, you know, people lie. But then you have to go into their mood and their attitude and their consciousness, you see. And especially like, I, I remember, I had four, three other sisters. So in our family, you know, mom and dad and uh, four girls and everybody was, <laughs> was wild, you know, in that sense. And in one level it's fun because you're, you know, all happening. But another level is you're very affected by the moods of the other people and their state of mind, their, their um, general attitude. So you want to be able to protect yourself from the consciousness and the attitudes that you don't want. And one of the ways you could do that sometimes is just get away is this, that you go be by yourself and, and uh, do some breathing, get yourself centered, maybe take your shoes off, you know, maybe lie down on the, the grass outside and look at the trees, you know, and smell, you know, get some nice air going, a little walk in the, by the beach or in the woods or wherever you can to get back to who you really are. And this bad attitude thing uh, you know, so many people that are managing a business or they're an administrator have no idea of how to really work with people. And so they're always blaming the employees of the other people because they're not getting their job done, but they don't really know what their job is, nor are they inspired with a great attitude. And when you have, when, when you get into the hang dog attitude or you get into the pity poor me attitude or you could get into life's not fair attitude or it's you know nobody likes me attitude or i'm not good enough attitude or i don't have any money attitude blah 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 what you're doing is you're th this is a state of consciousness where you have left your state of being as a divine being and you're following your thoughts and, and the thought of uh, they don't like me, you could get really scared, you know, and you feel bad because something's wrong with you or you get rejected in a relationship. One time, one of my granddaughters had shared that her boyfriend left her and I said, fantastic, that's great. And she goes, Whoa, she's looking at me. You know, you're going to get involved in a bad attitude and poor me, I guess I'm not good enough, nobody loves me, and then you feel sorry for yourself, and then you suck everybody else into your whole poor, poor you, are you all right? And some people make sickness a habit in the sense they could heal it, they could get rid of it if they find out what to do, what's the cause of it, 
don't you just don't treat symptoms you go to the cause of something and when you go to the cause you do eliminate the cause you eliminate the problem because it can't exist without the cause you see what I mean so when we have these attitudes and, and you think when you want to have a new attitude or a good attitude or a great attitude is you're keeping your mind stable and you're not letting your mind jerk around all the time and and you sometimes you just have to talk to yourself you know and give it it's really you're, in a sense you're ta you're you're affirming what you want and when you have a good attitude it means you feel good you're enthused and I like the word enthused in theos it means within God or within source or or beloved that you you are always enthused see if you get excited you're all also going to get depressed because that's how the mind works it works it works in duality like and dislike up has a down down has an up and it goes that so when you're excited then you're going to go depressed and then I'm excited and I'm depressed and then I'm bored and then I'm feeling bad you know it's just going on and on and if you if you take a look at if you ever watch the news or something on internet or TV or whatever, everybody they want to know what's your emotion. We want the emotion. We want the feeling. Because souls, if we look at this, are feeling bodies. This comes from Vedic knowledge, that souls are feeling bodies. We have a feeling body. So we we have an eternal spiritual body, and it is a feeling body, a sensing body, a knowing body. This is who we are. You're beyond description. And when you have a great attitude it also affects your body just like a bad attitude a sad attitude a poor me attitude a depressed I'm gonna die attitude I'm gonna lose you know all this and there's such fear of, of the loss maybe of a partner or a mate or such fear of the loss of a job or fear of the loss of your money or fear of the loss of anything so always in the consciousness is this fear of loss as if you have and you're already living it as if it's happened to you you're already experiencing the thing that might happen someday that may probably never will or if it does you want to prepare yourself is that it you're preparing for the loss you can't lose one of my old friends was Reverend Ike. He's a prosperity teacher. And he said, you can't lose with the stuff we use. It was really good. He had these really cool little sayings and everything. And he helped perform my daughter Rebecca's wedding with Dave. And it was, it was, it was, a, it was a great wedding, actually. It was really all the family and everything. It was great. And um, my parents were divorced and hadn't seen each other maybe, oh, long, 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 many, many, many years. So my mom was real nervous uh, about seeing my dad. My dad was kind of excited to see my mom. And so, but my mom still <laughs> hated my dad. My dad was cool about it. You know, couldn't wait to see my mom. So anyway, he comes up to see my mom and in his excitement, it hits the drink she has and it spills on her dress. I mean, my mom was already bummed out. So what does she get? She gets the dress, the, drunk, the drink spilled on her dress. Cause my dad was except excited to see her and she was just bummed out and terrified to see him so all of a sudden now she's got to go do there you go that's how it goes it's it's like dominoes you see and it just hits and just rolls out and and it can consume everybody so a bad attitude you know i know this one guy up here at shaft every time you see him he starts out you go i don't he can't even say how are you because if you say how are you i don't have any money I don't have any money. I don't have any money. This is all, all so what am I supposed to do about that? You know, it's like this. So it, it, people have a predominant attitude and we say, oh, you're a Pollyanna. We, yeah, you put you down. Well, why, what, what's your alternative? Years ago when I was skiing at Mammoth, I was on the deck looking out there. Uh, there was a woman there who was a quadru had a quadriplegic body in a wheelchair and she had been a skier that was getting ready for the Olympics and had a Jill Kinmont and she had this skiing accident. Sitting, watching her in this wheelchair, she was in joy watching the other skiers. And I said, boy, you have a great attitude. She said, what's my option? What's your option? And 
you know, it's in some levels we've got to make the best of a bad situation in a sense. Because you look at what's going on supposedly in the world, at least we're being told by whatever media thing we're watching or reading or studying about it. But again, what does that have to do with you? You know, there's somewhere in the Bible, so I think somewhere in Jesus' teaching in that particular form of, you know, I get, I, I, it's not that I believe teachings, I, that's not it. I use them to bring me to myself, to who I really am in my connection with you and the divine and all that is, and, and, and work to take off all these layers of unconsciousness and ignorance and self-abuse and abuse of others and all of this that we have uh, been, and you might say, acclimated to. We've been taught this to compete, to fight, to war, all this, and to say it's human. You know, it's, it is, it really isn't. It's very alien to us because we're very gentle, kind, and loving. And so when we get so much stuff coming at us all the time in the world, and then you think, well, I guess I have to feel bad for others. Don't feel bad for others. Have compassion, but don't take on their stuff. That's, that's see, an empaths are these people who are very, well, I'm an empath, so very sensitive to feelings. And we really are, all of us, if we l allow ourselves to tune in to our own beingness and where we go. So we do feel things and we notice and sense. And I remember my mom would always be in the family trying to be in the middle between this group and that group, trying to keep balance. So it keeps you uneasy all the time, trying to be a peacemaker, trying to make sure they're not upset and they're not upset and they're okay and this is that. And all this stuff going on in the world, it says, well, imagine if this struck you down. Imagine if, don't imagine it if you don't want it. I'm telling you that. Don't imagine it if you don't want it because your imagination is powerful, powerful. So that sense, to stay um, centered because consciousness attitude is contagious and it's an epidemic proportion where people are in anxiety and fear and you see it isn't the leaving the body that's such a big deal it's the fear of how's it going to happen will it be painful is this going to do i'll lose my stuff and my people and i won't ex no the good and the bad news is you cannot die my darling so you better know who you are and 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 how you get that we can get that a lot from ancient teachings ancient wisdom but you apply it it's not a belief system you apply these tools and these steps to bring you to who you are to keep you centered in yourself and to not be blown around by every little change in the weather, every little change in the people, every little change that's going on, because this world changes all the time, because consciousness changes. So, have the consciousness of enthusiasm. Keep that consciousness, and if people around you and out there in the world, they're bumming you out, and just avoid them as much as possible, so you can keep in yourself and have your own way that you keep centered so that nobody can knock you off your center of being.